Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland, and here I am on Lord North Street in London. And just behind me, where that green plaque is, that's the house where uh, William Thomas Stead lived for the last eight years of his life. Um, Stead is uh, best known as being, well, the, the father of investigative journalism and being a renowned newspaper editor in the late 19th century into the early 20th century. Um, and perhaps um, his most celebrated uh, scoop was when he proved it was possible in London to purchase a child for the purpose of prostitution. I say prove, but th there are some people who cast out on this. Um, and that time the age of consent was 12. Um, and uh, as part of his campaign, Stead managed to have it raised to 16, the Criminal Law Amendment Act of 1885. Um, because um, he was very concerned about um, all these uh, child brothels going on, the white slave trade, as they called it in those days. How is it any worse than the black slave trade? Uh, of course it's not, but white slave trade was often a euphemism for forced prostitution. Um, and uh, fornication was, was no crime. There were, there were crimes around prostitution, such as soliciting, but the prostitution itself was not illegal. Um, running, running a house of ill fame was illegal though. But wait a second, how do you actually get your clients if you're a prostitute without advertising in some form? Anyway, um, so uh, then uh, through a rigmarole, I shan't go through all the particulars, he um, managed to pay a sum of money for Eliza Armstrong, who was then a baker's dozen years old, um, with, uh, hinting that this was for an immoral purpose and blah, blah, blah. Now, there are others who dispute this, who say, um, well, um, he kidnapped her. He was, in fact, convicted of kidnapping and sent three, spent three months in prison. We would not look so kindly on, on using this child for this, for this purpose, uh, putting through this traumatic experience for the sake of a journalistic scoop these days. Um, he didn't get the uh, parents' say-so for him to, to, to do this with her taking her from one town to another and blah, blah, blah. And they say, well, you know, he didn't actually say that he was going to have her working in a house of prostitution or something like, something like that. But I, I don't think anyone doubts that his um, mission was noble. It was to prevent um, the severest form of, of, of child exploitation of these minors. And like 12 then was much younger than 12 now because people were very naive, had no sex education, were so malnourished, just didn't develop um, in many ways. So, and the adults who were doing this sort of thing with them were not punished at all in those days you know unless it, you could really prove that it was rape they weren't punished at all um, the, so long as they were over the age of 12 that was that but Stead said that this is an abomination we must do something about it anyway Stead he was born in Northumbria which is the northeast corner of England and his father was a congregational minister they didn't have much money but <clears throat> they were held in high esteem in that area um, so Stead was a very erudite boy uh, was a was good at Latin. He'd read the read the good book from cover to cover several times, um, but uh, there was no third level of education for him. He, uh, as for most people, left school in his in his mid mid teens, and he became a clerk at some company or other. But journalism was his first love, and he was soon writing pieces for the local newspaper. By the age of twelve, he was the editor of the Northern Echo, so he was the youngest newspaper editor in the realm. He came down to London, wrote for the Pall Mall Gazette, which no longer exists, but it was a very major publication back then. So the late 19th century was more or less the um, heyday of newspapers, because it was before radio. And by the end of the 19th century, the country had almost full literacy. Remember, 1870, finally, all children had to go to school to the age of 12. Now, there are some people who, who'd, um, who, who were just over that age, as in um, hadn't uh, just sort of say 13 in 1870, who'd never got to school, go to school for a single day. And that generation didn't die out to the 1940s. But and nonetheless, even before 1870, uh, a high majority of people were going to school, even if it was just for a couple of years, even if it was a fairly poor quality education. And obviously it hadn't been superseded by radio, which, which came along. And uh, because um, they, they couldn't print photos in the late 19th century, the verbal description had to be all the more vivid. Um, so Stead was a campaigning journalism, a journalist, and he was the first to appreciate the full impact that a reportage, um, opinion and comment pieces could have, how it could shape public opinion, um, and how he very extensively covered the public reaction to Gladstone's um, uh, Midlothian campaign, to his expose of the Bulgarian horrors in uh, 1876, um, and so forth. So that was Stead. He, he traveled to Russia in 1905 during the revolution to try and campaign for peace, didn't get anywhere. 
Um, uh, he seemed to be broadly liberal to politics, um, but nonetheless campaigned for the Royal Navy to be beefed up, which might seem paradoxical because he was actually quite dovish, but he felt it was a case of peace through strength. Um, he became fascinated with, with spiritualism towards the end of his life, which was, which was quite a popular thing. There's even more of a fad for it after the First World War when so many youths had been killed in the Great War and their relatives desperately didn't want to think they'd completely lost touch with them for all eternity. So that was a sort of a grand old man of, of journalism by 1912, but uh, unfortunately he went down on the good ship Titanic. He was sailing to the United States that uh, fateful April night in 1912. So that is the celebrated W.T. Stead.